بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم ما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي This is my first time doing a محاضرة so please bear with me and if I talk fast tell me على مهلك شوية شوية إن شاء الله today's topic uh, for the lecture is learning from the past and planning for the future uh, it's a pretty broad uh, topic. It doesn't have to do specifically with uh, religion. It's not really a, a topic that's only about deen. It's not only, uh, and it doesn't have only, to, does not only deal with deen, but it also deals with everything we do in our lives. So inshallah, let's begin. So as we start a new year, we have goals from the past that we weren't able to accomplish. And there's a lot of reasons that we didn't accomplish those goals. Uh, sometimes we have goals that are too big and uh, you know, we are not capable of accomplishing them. They're virtually impossible. Sometimes we have too many goals and sometimes we have internal and external factors that يعني, hold us back from accomplishing these goals. And I'll be going over all these things uh, throughout the lecture and I'll also um, talk about how we can deal with these uh, setbacks or these uh, obstacles that we go through. Uh, starting off talking about uh, big goals, uh, sometimes our goals can be irrational. You know, some people have goals that physically or mentally or financially you're not able to accomplish these goals uh, or there's not enough time for you to accomplish these goals. These goals are, you know, you're trying to do so much in so little time uh, it's virtually impossible. Uh, the most common reason that uh, we don't accomplish our goals is uh, starting off with the internal factors. Number one, who can, who, who can tell me uh, what's the reason we are not able to accomplish our goals? So, Ibrahim, you raise your hand first. Okay, he said time. What's the, these are internal, internal uh, factors. So, something inside of you, something about you. All right, so, confidence. Okay, go ahead. Health issues? Okay, could, could be, could be. Laziness, that's a good one. Anybody else? Darsham? Yeah, lack of motivation or motivation. I mean, motivation would make you accomplish the goal, but. Okay, Hadifa? Okay, that's a good one. All right, lack of commitment. Halas, we'll start. The first one I got was Hussam, I think he said it, uh, which was laziness. Uh, in in Adkar, al Sabah, and Al Masa, we say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al Hammi wal Hazan, wa a'udhu bika min al Ajzi wal Kasal. So yani, we, 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 uh, we ask Allah, we seek Allah's refuge from being lazy. Uh, a lot of us are, you know, we have things that we want to accomplish, big dreams and everything, but we're not willing to put in the work. So, uh, I mean, if you're not going to do the work, who else is going to do the work for you? Uh, number two on this list was procrastination, which is putting off work to the next day. Uh, uh, there's a method or there's a qawl. Uh, some people say it's a hadith or whatever. It's hadith life, I'm guessing. Uh, it's uh, that, uh, or, or it's just a go, or it's just a, like a saying. It's amal al yawm al ghad. So like, don't put off the work for today, uh, for the future. And, and the khutbah today, the English khutbah, Akhuna uh, Ibrahim al-Hajj, he said that, uh, he said a saying or a story about someone who uh, puts off their work for the morning, instead of doing it in the morning, which they're awakened, they put it off till the evening, which they're not guaranteed. Uh, and then the person that has something to do or they're able to do it in the evening, they put it off till the next morning, which also they are not guaranteed. So that's, procrastination is one of the main reasons that uh, people don't accomplish their goals. Uh, number three is lack of confidence. I mean, if you have all the I mean, knowledge and the physical capabilities and everything, and you lack confidence, then that's just a waste. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is gonna believe in you. And then number four is uh, the fear of failure. Uh, and if you're afraid to fail, then 
you'll never begin. And if you'll never be, and if you don't begin, then you'll never see the end or the destination or your work pay off. Uh, and there's like some quotes that I listed under for fear of failure. Uh, one of them is failure is not a, failure is a lesson. It's not a setback. So when we fail, when we're trying to accomplish our goals, uh, we don't see it as something that oh halas we failed and we can't do anything else anymore. You see why you failed and you figure it out the reason you failed and you move on. You take it as a lesson, you learn from it. And also there's another quote that was here is failure isn't the, failure isn't the opposite of success. It's a part of it. So to get to, to be a successful person, you're gonna have to fail. There's no person that will tell you that they never failed in their life. Every person, every successful person is made up from their failures. That's what makes them who they are. Number five is the fear of change. Some people think that there's always this one way to do things and that's it. There's no other way possible to do it. If I don't do it this way, then I'm going to fail and I'm not going to get anywhere with this. But change is actually good. You know, change can be the reason that you improve on something or you make something better. Number six of the most common reasons uh, goals aren't accomplished is being overwhelmed. So one example of being overwhelmed is someone who wants to do everything and doesn't have the time to do everything. Like you have goals, you have goals for, يعني, for example, the masjid and then you have career goals and then you have uh, family goals and you have goals everywhere. But there's so many goals, you don't know where to start. You just do a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you don't finish anything. So basically, you start it, but you never finish. You never get to the end. And then you become stressed out, and then you just burn out, and khalas. You, you don't have any more effort or any more will to finish off what you started. Number seven uh, is lack of motivation. It goes hand in hand with laziness. Uh, the lack of motivation, if, if you're not motivating yourself, if you're not pushing yourself to do anything, Nobody's going to support you. Nobody's going to push you to do it. If you yourself are not the one that wants to accomplish this thing, then nobody's going to tell you, oh, accomplish it for them. Why would you accomplish it for someone else? Your goals are for you and you only. And number eight, which is actually I think is very, very important, is not knowing how to set goals. So if you don't know how to set your goals, then you'll be going everywhere. Like You'll be all over the place. You won't, have, uh, you won't be going on a straight path towards your goal. You'll be going all different directions and your destination is there and say you're trying to say it's like a dartboard and you're throwing the darts trying to get the bullseye and you're just hitting the wall hanaka the wall hanaka right there right there you know you're just not coordinated you're not you know you're not going straight towards your goal and those were the internal factors that uh you know that stop you from uh accomplishing your goals so now let's talk about the external factors who, th who thinks they know an external factor that will stop you, something from outside, something worldly that will stop you from accomplishing. All right, Amr, The distractions, yep, that's, that's a good one. Anybody else? Hassan, go ahead. Okay, money. Any, Darsham? Huh? Time is a good one. What do you think? Hmm? Sickness? Okay, I mean, that's, 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 that could be one. I, I get you. I get what you're saying. Hassam again. Mm -hmm. That's 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 very good. Mm -hmm. So like lack of support from your family and friends. All right. So I have. I think you guys got all of them. Like he said one. He said one. He said one. You said one I didn't have, but that was good. So distractions from like, uh, you said entertainment and stuff like that, right? Yeah, media and entertainment. So the first one I have on here is time. And uh, the external factor, it's an external factor because sometimes we have goals and we don't have enough time to accomplish them. And other times we have time, but we don't put enough time towards the goal. So like when you have the goal, you're not putting in the effort and giving it the time that it needs to be accomplished. Number two is money. Not having enough money to accomplish your goal. Uh, either to buy things, say your goal is to start a business. And I mean, to start a business, you're gonna need some money uh, to begin with. 
So if you don't have any money, then how can you start the business? How can that be your dream? Or to like buy a house or something. Number three is physical ability, which could be sickness. Uh, say you're trying to be a track star, and Allah tested you by, you know, saying, you know, giving you, uh, taking away your ability to walk. You're on a wheelchair. So you, you know, you can't really be a track star on a wheelchair. Or, you know. And number four is the lack of a support system. Uh, you surround yourself with people who don't support your goals or you surround yourself with people who are putting you down constantly uh, or you're not leaning on your support system. That, that's one thing that people, they think that they can do things all on their own and not all the time, it's not all the time that that's true. If you have a goal and it's a, it's a huge goal, it's, it's okay to ask for help from somebody. It's okay to you know, lean on people around you like your family and your friends. All that is okay. And surrounding yourself with people who are walking a different path in life. You know, say you're trying to be an engineer and you're surrounding yourself with doctors. You guys are not going the same way, so why you guys, you know, you guys can't really motivate each other the right way because they're going with some, for something totally different. And uh, there's a quote that Anwar shared. <laughs> It says, if you want to fly like an eagle, don't hang around with chickens. Because chickens can't fly if you guys didn't understand the joke. All right, so, uh, so that's basically, those are the things that would hold somebody back. Those are the main things that I think would hold somebody back from accomplishing their goals. Uh, and that's what we can, you know, uh, when we look back and we see why do we accomplish our goals, those are mainly the reasons why most people don't reach their, uh, you know, the milestones that they're expecting to reach in life and stuff like that. And so now moving forward, how can we change ourselves and how can we learn from what we uh, used to do in the past? I want to bring up a verse from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughghayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughghayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah would never change a people's state until they change what is within themselves. So if you're the one that's not changing, then don't expect the result to change. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, then it's not, the result is not going to change, especially if you're not, especially if it's the result that you're not trying to get. If you're not going to change your approach, then don't expect something something different to happen. Uh, and so, planning for the future, part one, uh, step one, is first things first. Uh, whatever you do in this life, whether it's yani, for your religion, like spiritually, or for this dunya, yani financially or educational. Uh, it should all be for the sake of Allah. Whatever you do in this life should be for the sake of Allah. Uh, and you should have ikhlas. Uh, number two, uh, set pig, uh, not pig, big picture goals. Uh, so set the destination, then figure out the path. So like if you have a goal, for example, memorizing the Quran. And the way you're going to get there is, you know, maybe first learning how to read Arabic. Step one. And then maybe... When, once you start reading Arabic, you learn uh, how to read maybe a few, sen a few ayats from the Quran. And then you learn the ahkam and you know, so on and so forth. And then you build on and build on until you start like memorizing certain amounts of Quran a day. And that's, that's your journey to the destination, which is memorizing the Quran. Or some people have the, the big picture as getting married. And some other people have it as getting a degree or getting education. And to meet these goals, we need to have sub-goals. And these sub goals shouldn't be something that's too high and shouldn't be something that's too low. For example, say you want to hafal the Quran and your goal is to memorize half a page a day. A day. You holding yourself back and holding yourself to that half a page isn't going to do you any good. Where you can hafal the Quran earlier if you just do what your maximum capability is. Or even a little bit below your maximum but still more than something that you know, you're more than uh, capable of uh, you know, doing. So your goals shouldn't be something in small increments, it should be something, you know, progression, something that will get you closer and closer the best way possible. Uh, for example, as a sub goal for like maybe getting a degree, you know, you're going to have to pay for college, so, or maybe for marriage, uh, you want to, you know, start working a part time job uh, aside, alongside with school, you know, make some money and uh, put it towards uh, your marriage or your degree or anything uh, for your school. 
Uh, and also, if you want to memorize the Quran, like I said, uh, memorizing a page a day could be a sub goal. Uh, and, or for again, for your degree, studying a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of time per day, every day, uh, so then you can, you know, educate yourself and do good on your tests and your exams and stuff like that and learn the content. Number four uh, is categorizing your goals. And categorizing it could be in two ways. Uh, which I think you should do both ways but so you can categorize your goals to spiritual goals these are examples so you know there's still of course more categories you can add but these are what I th what I came up with so coming up with uh, spiritual goals and stuff to do with the Dean and uh, what you're gonna do like people have goals to come suddenly five times a day every day every day at the masjid that's that, that could be a spiritual goal or maybe uh, uh, like one of my goals was to do a uh, muhadara, but I mean it came up uh, on short notice, so <laughs> I can't complain though. It's, I guess it's turning out pretty well. Uh, and then educational goals, which are like your school goals, like which you're trying to get a degree and get a job after it. Social goals, uh, maybe you want to be an influencer or something. Maybe you want to have an impact on social media. Uh, so those are the types of uh, goals you can have. Financial goals, people want to have financial freedom. So if that's gonna, you know, it can work hand in hand with the other goals, maybe educational or social goals. Uh, physical goals, maybe you want to, you know, be a gym guy, you know, be strong, muscle man, go to the gym, work out every day. That type, if that's your type of, uh, you know, goal, then go for it. Uh, and then there's also mental health goals. Some people want to be uh, mentally sound, uh, you know, stress-free and, you know, not having to be worrying all the time and, uh, you know, always overreacting and things like that. Uh, and then you can list all these goals based off of priority. And all your goals should have some type of priority. No goal is not important. So high priority goals and lesser priority goals. It shouldn't be high priority and low priority because uh, actually, it shouldn't be higher priority than like no priority because if it's not important for you to reach your big picture goal, then there's no point of L. Uh, and then we should make uh, SMART goals. And SMART goals, anybody know what SMART stands for? All right, we got, so, so we got S, what is it? All right, specific, measurable, all right. Uh, okay, achievable. Relevant, that's, that's the R, and then uh, the T is timely, all right. And uh, so a smart goal, so a specific goal, meaning like, if, for example, you will say you want to be smart. Uh, my goal is to be smart. Okay, be specific about it. I want to be smart in math. I want to be smart in science. I want to be good at, I want to get better in English. You know, that could be a... Uh, a specific goal and then measurable you got to have a way to see that you accomplished this goal uh, or to like see how much you benefited from working towards this goal you know you got to be able to measure the improvement and uh, achievable it has to be something that you are capable of accomplishing it can't be something that is I mean not it's never going to be within your reach uh, it has to be your goals have to be relevant towards what towards your big picture goal so if you're trying to, for example, uh, if you're trying to uh, be like, if you're trying to run a mile under six minutes, for example, and then your goal that you put is to eat, <laughs> to eat a donut a day, all right, that's your goal. How is that going to help you reach your goal of getting to uh, a mile under six minutes? So this, it has to be irrelevant, something relevant towards helping and keeping you on track uh, to reaching your big picture goal. And also, and I need the last letter of it is timely. Your goals shouldn't be something open-ended. It shouldn't be, oh, I have a goal and I want to accomplish it before my, the end of my life. It should be, you know, your goals should be given a certain span of time where you can see, oh, okay, I want to accomplish it by within the year or six months or maybe the end of the month or a year, five years, ten years, something like that. It shouldn't be something that you leave open-ended and then that would lead you to procrastination and stuff like that. And uh, number six for you know, how to plan for the future, you should not over overwhelm yourself with too many goals. But don't hold yourself back. 
So if you have too many goals, like I said, you will start so many things, but never finish them. And if you, but then also, there's also the opposite side, where you hold yourself back, where you have certain goals that are something that you know you can accomplish easily, and you're not really reaching for the stars or aiming high. And uh, number seven, overall, none of this matters. None of whatever, what I've said so far matters if you're not consistent. If you just do it once, if you're working towards something and you accomplish something and you stop there, then there was no point of accompli accomplishing or reaching that goal. Because you have big picture goals, and if you accomplish these small goals and you're fine with it and not accomplishing all of your, your other goals, then, you know, then you're never going to reach that big picture goal. You know, if you, if you leave some of your small uh, sub goals, then you're never going to reach your big goal. And consistency is key because, uh, you know, if you're not putting in the work all the time, then you're, you're going to see that your work, you're doing half the work that you're required to do, is going to lead you to doing, getting half the result that you want. And so we said there's smart goals, but there's also smarter goals. And the ER part, Anybody know what the ER part is? Not emergency room. Who said emergency room? I'll uh, you. No, it's not emergency room. It's uh, your goals should be, uh, you should be able to evaluate. And no, you should, not you should be able to. You should evaluate and revise your goals. So uh, what I recommend is doing progress checks. So Progress checks are a way that you can keep track of where you are to, uh, and how close you are to achieving your goal. So throughout the year, you know, you don't have to wait. People say, oh, new year, new me, and they wait till the end of the year. They say I have their New Year's resolution and it's for the whole year and khalas. They, for, they say, I'm not going to check how, uh, how far I got until the end of the year. But in the next year, they repeat the same New Year's resolution. And you see everybody at the gym. Okay, so a smarter goal, you know, Part of being, making smarter goals is progress checks. So throughout like every three months, like for example, for the, um, uh, like you should, like how, how companies, they have quarters and they see how they performed in those quarters. Um, so at, like every three months or every month, if you want, evaluate yourself and see how far you got to accomplishing your goals. Uh, and it holds you accountable for not, reach, for not uh, reaching or accomplishing certain uh, sub goals which is just smaller goals. So if you don't accomplish those goals, then you're gonna start feeling you know, guilty about it. You'll be like, oh, I didn't put in enough effort to accomplish these, this many sub, sub goals by this certain amount of time. I need to put in more effort for the next quarter or for the next time period that I, you know, before I need to do my next progress check. And again, like I said, which is number four, again, you should not wait till the end of the year or the end of your uh, span that you set to check, uh, to see your progress. You should see it uh, consistently because you get to see if you're putting in enough effort. Because if you're not, you get to add the extra effort uh, and see what you're lacking in. And uh, the final thing I want to touch on, I know this is going quite fast. Uh, the final thing I want to touch on is tawakkul. So anybody know what's the, what's the sixth pillar of uh, Iman? Anybody know it? I mean, you guys, I only see somebody you know. Everybody know. I, I did tell you to ask. I want to hear somebody else. Uh, you, behind Abdu. Abdu, behind you, right there with the blue hoodie. I am sorry for putting you on the spot, but do you know what's the sixth pillar of Iman? You don't know? Okay, Hadefa. What's the sixth pillar of Iman? Not you, Hadefa. That Hadefa. Hadefa, you. Yeah. You. What's the sixth pillar of Iman? So no matter how perfect you think your plan is, uh, and, and no matter how much you do towards your, you know, how much effort you put in towards your goal, at the end of the day, Allah, you have something planned and Allah has a plan for you, and that plan that Allah has is better. Allah says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Perhaps you dislike something that is good for you. And perhaps you like something which is bad for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. So at the end of the day, no matter how much you do, and you know, and you Allah knows what's best for you. 
So after all your planning and your executing and your sincere efforts, uh, leave the rest to Allah and Allah will handle your affairs. And that's all I have for you guys today. If anybody has any questions or they want to add something or something like that, feel free. There's like a minute, I guess. Or maybe if there's a lot of questions. I don't think there's going to be any questions. It's pretty clear cut and uh, set in stone type of things. So, Jazakumullah khair ala husn istima' wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.